Well, hi guys. Um, hi everybody, I guess, guys, girls. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial right now on a 2D heat transfer with uh, ANSYS 12.0. Um, this is basically the geometry. It's pretty simple geometry. There's nothing complicated about this problem, but the, the point is that this problem is useful because um, with the steps that I'm going to show you right now, you should be able to do most of your 2D um, simulations uh, dealing with heat transfer um, and you know you can make the geometry more difficult if you want you can change the numbers here and there but overall it's going to be pretty much all the same steps so uh, let's get right into it uh, you've got this geometry it's basically a plate with a hole in the middle um, top plate top uh, surface is insulated you've got a constant temperature on the right constant temperature on the left uh, and then you've got a heat flux coming in from the bottom, convection in the center, and you've got um, a thermal uh, co uh, conduction coefficient, K. And uh, let me just scroll down to the problem description. Okay, so thermal conductivity of 25 watts per meter uh, degrees Celsius and also has a heat generation rate of 30 watts per meter cubed. Um, so let's get to it, let's start. So open up your product launcher. Um, what you wanna do is create a file ahead of time. So if this computer wakes up, we might get something done today. So create a, a new directory transfer example that's what I'm going to call it okay and now go ahead and browse find that folder Sorry, this computer, this is just, uh, I say it all the time, and maybe you guys are starting to notice it, that basically this, I'm working on a ghost drive, and it can be really slow sometimes. Then, then it picks up. So hit run, that'll open up uh, ANSYS. Alright, I like to work on a white white background, go to style, there's just some things I do, you don't have to do, but um, I like to do them all the time, reverse video, I also am in the habit of putting on a title, heat transfer tutorial, click OK. Okay, and if it doesn't show up right away, go ahead and replot. Now it showed up down here. And hit your preferences. We're gonna do a thermal analysis. Click OK. Preprocessor. Gonna choose the element type. Add. And we're going to do plane 77. So let's find that. Eight node 77. Okay. Close that. And go ahead and save if you'd like. There are no real constants for plane 77, but if you wanted to double check that, it doesn't hurt. You can try to add uh, a constant and it won't let you just like that uh, okay so go into material uh, models conductive isotropic and if you recall we said that our thermal conductivity uh, K 
coefficient is 25 watts per meter uh, degree Celsius. So we went ahead and we put that in. Save. Now we're going to start with some pretty, uh, pretty useful uh, tools uh, in terms of areas if you're not used to doing it. We're going to make the outer rectangle first by two corners. I'm going to put my first point at the origin and then the width and height, let me just check the geometry. You have to always make sure that you're using the right uh, units. So I'm going to input my units in meters uh, and these are all in centimeters so it's going to be 0 0.08 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 that's 0 0.16 plus 0 0.1 that's 0 0.26 is the width and then the height is 0.3 so let's get back to this the width said so 0.26 and then the height where'd my mouse go? There it is. 0.3 Okay, press all right. Now we've got a square. And okay, so we just made the square. Um, now we're going to make the inner circle. And um, let's just take a look at uh, the dimensions. So we've got um, the diameter of this circle is uh, 10 centimeters. And the center of the circle is at. Uh, this is 26, so it's right in the middle, it's 13. And then the height is 30, half of that is 15. So it's 13 by 15, the diameter is 10 centimeters. Oops, wrong one. So we're going to get create areas by circle, solid circle. And then the x is going to be 0.13. The y is going to be 0.15. And the radius, the diameter was 0.1, so the radius is 0 0.05. And the moment of truth, let's see if that's right. Okay, that looks right, good. So here we can go ahead and save if you'd like. Now, this is a pretty useful tool I'm about to show you. Uh, when when you're modeling inside of uh, here you can also model outside of um, Antis but if you want to model inside of here it's good to know that how to delete or subtract um, two areas from each other so go to operate boolean and subtract areas you can also do volume now it's kind of tricky but you have to choose the larger area okay and press enter and then choose the inner area press enter and it has been done let's just go ahead and plot areas make sure if that was done correctly and let's do numbering controls, let's number the areas, make sure that we're doing well so far. Okay, so that's correct. We only have one area, and it's called area 3. Area 1 was our square, area 2 is our circle, now area 3 is this plate here with the hole in the middle. So, that's a good tool to know about. Now our modeling uh, is finished. Let's save and I can move on to meshing. Meshing, you can you can do this many different ways. I didn't want to press that button. I'm going to do this. You can set the global attributes there. If you have different ones, you can change that. And um, I'm going to set the line lines. Actually, I'm going to pick all and do 10 divisions per line and where's my mouse, there it is, press OK and let's go ahead and mesh areas
And, you know, it's not too bad. I wonder... I'm going to try this. I'm going to refine this element. Pick all. Okay, so you can refine it as easily as that. So it's pretty, uh, it's an okay mesh. We're going to accept that mesh and move forward. Let's go ahead and move to loads. Define loads. Apply. And thermal. And let's first set um, the two constant 100 uh, degrees on both of these lines. So temp 100 and press OK. All right. So going back to the one, we've got 100 degrees Celsius on these two walls here. Now the next thing we can do is can apply the convection in the inner surface. Our H is 55 and the temperature is going to be 5 degrees C. So let's see, we're going to apply thermal convection on lines. Go ahead and choose the inner lines. That's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Just this circle was divided into four lines. Click OK. Now the film coefficient is at 55. That's our H. Um, and then the bulk temperature was 5 degrees Celsius. Click OK. And then the last thing, actually not the last thing, but one of the second to last thing we need to do is apply the heat flux. Let's just, let me just uh, remind myself, 500 watts per meter squared heat flux. And we're going to apply it to the lower area. Select that area. I mean, sorry, lower line. Click OK. And the heat flux value is 500. OK. Press OK. And then the last bit is heat generation on areas. And this is the area. But before, let me just remind myself of what the actual value for the heat generation is. Thirty, thirty watts per meter cubed. Thirty watts per meter cubed. Now I just actually am thinking right now the units that he gave that this uh, problem is stated. It says 30 watts per meter cubed, and I'm starting to think that uh, I need to convert that number. Let me see. Let's list areas. The area of area 3 is stated here, 0 0.07015. So, you know, if I'm wrong about this, don't please don't, you know, crucify me. But uh, I'm going to convert that number because we're working in meters squared and the number given to me was in meters cubed. And uh, I believe that that's the correct thing to do. So let me just get a calculator out really quickly. And what do we have? We have uh, meters squared, so it's got to be multiplied. So it's 30 times 0 0.07. Zero, one, five, 2.1045 okay so uh, we're going to do heat generation on areas okay two point oh one four five and that's okay and so now we've went ahead, we've added all of our uh, constraints or loadings, right? And the next thing we're going to do is solve. Current LS, press OK. 
solution is done perfect click OK I mean click close close this and there's a ton of things you can look up in post-processing but let's just do some of the basics right here contour nodal solution and the most satisfying is usually the nodal temperatures so look at that what have we got here remember we're working in Celsius so this is heating up pretty hot on the edges well you know I, we would expect that right because the edges we set to be a hundred degrees Celsius now in the center where the convection is happening and remember that like I guess you could imagine this as a pipe pipe going through the center that's at five degrees Celsius and that's at 87 degrees Celsius right along those this wall here um, let me see you can also do other things like the um, the flux and um, you can also let me see I don't really want to get into path operations well alright guys um, I hope this helps somebody uh, again you can you know play around with the, uh, the post processing the outputs and everything but uh, at least now you know how to work a 2D problem on ANSYS and you know how to do quite a bit because of the tools that I've just showed you. So thanks for watching and I hope it helps somebody. So long.